family, friends. Today I'm saying family because everyone always tells me that I always say friends and never family. But I consider all of you my family, my family in Christ. Welcome to another episode of Changing Tracks. Today we have yet another wonderful video conference, this time in English. We have the honor of having Mario Joseph with us. Mario Joseph, Mario Joseph, welcome to Changing Tracks. Thank you for being with us today. You're welcome, and may God bless. I guess we can start with an easy question. What was your childhood like? Where are you from? What was your family like? Tell us a little about yourself. My great-grandparents are from Turkey, but they came and settled down in India, in the South Kerala, a location called Wayanad. It's a beautiful hill station. We are six children at home, and I am third one. When I was in the womb of my mama, there was an infection for her womb. So all the doctors said the child will die in the womb. And doctors compelled my mother to kill, my ch kill the child, you know. So, but she's very good devotee of Allah, God. So she did not accept anyone or any advice. She prayed to Allah saying, Allah, life belongs to you. So I know you can give life. If you give life for this baby, I will surrender this baby for you. That was her offering or a surrender. And uh, miraculously, I, I was born. All thought I will die in the womb. Because I have been dedicated to God, uh, my parents did not send me to school. So my childhood was very bad because when my brothers, sisters and neighbors all goes to school, I don't have any freedom to go because I, I was belongs to God. And at the age of eight, they sent me to a Muslim Arabic college uh, to make me Muslim Maulana. So till the eight, if you ask me, I don't remember all the things, but I remember between five and eight, some of the incidents. So my childhood was not very happy because uh, against my wish, they were, you know, they did not ask me, are you ready to go for God? Uh, nothing like that. They themselves offered and they said, you are for God. You became an imam before you were 18, right? Yes. And how did that happen? Okay, for us uh, to become Muslim Maulana, we, we, you have to study philosophy and theology. So in the philosophy, you will have five years or almost. In that five years, you will be studying about metaphysics, epistemology, logic, etc. And then Arabic language also. And then second term is your theology period. It's called Muhtasar. The first is Muhtasar and second is Mutawil. So in the Mutawil period, you will be studying theology, you know, moral theology and Quranic theology, Sharia law, everything. And then by within 10 years, some people will be 12, but those who are very clear in studies and performance within 10 years, they can finish their studies. So I did my 10 years studies in that Arabic college that's situated in South Kerala. And I did my studies there. All right. And during that time, during that formation process, during that time period, you never stopped to ask yourself, for example, if everything they were teaching you was, was really true? No, one thing, one thing from the childhood onwards uh, was there uh, in me, like uh, the laws should not be forcibly compelled on human beings. You can give the freedom. If you want, you do it. This is good. If you do it, you will attain good. This is bad. If you do it, you will attain bad. You can say that. But if you did not do, you should not be punished on earth itself. So for an example, in Islam, you know, my daddy will say, you say namaz. If I did not say namaz, they will beat me. They will say, you take Ramzan. If I, if I am not taking my fasting, then they will not give me food. You know, the punishment was not very happy for me in my childhood. So, when exactly did you start to think for the first time, this isn't true? When did you start to turn away from Islam or, or I mean, what made you begin to pursue Christianity? Okay, the, 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 while I was working in a Muslim masjid as an imam, uh, as a parish priest, once I preached in my parish that Jesus Christ is not God. For me, God was only Allah. And I believe Allah never married, so no son for Allah. So I preached there that Jesus is not God. Then somebody asked me, who is Jesus? From the crowd. Maybe a Muslim, but he asked me, who is Jesus? I was preaching, he's not God. But the question, who is he? To know who is he, I read the entire Quran once again. 
114 chapters, 6,666 verses in Quran. When I read it, the name of Prophet Muhammad I found in Quran four places, but the name of Jesus I found 25 places. There itself I was little confused. Why Quran giving more preference for Jesus? And second thing, I could not see any women's name in Quran, Prophet Muhammad's mother name or wife's name or children's name, no. In the Quran there is only one woman name I found, Maryam, the mother of Jesus, no other woman name. And in the Holy Quran chapter 3, the name of the chapter is Family of Maryam. And the Holy Quran chapter 19, the name of the chapter itself is Maryam. One chapter is Maryam. So I was very curious to know why this Quran says all these things. About Maryam, Holy Quran chapter 3 verses 34 onwards says that Mary was born without original sin. She never committed any sin in her life. She was ever virgin. Uh, Quran chapter 50 verses 23 says that she went to heaven with her physical body. Even the assumption is written in Holy Quran. And then about Jesus, when I read chapter 3 verses 45 to 55 verses, there are 10 points which Quran makes about Jesus. The first thing Quran says Kalimatullah the Arabic word which means word of God and the second thing Ruhullah which means spirit of God and the third is Isal Masih which means Jesus Christ so Quran gives the name for Jesus word of God spirit of God Jesus Christ and then Quran says that Jesus spoke when he was very small like two days old after his birth he began to speak Quran says that Jesus created a live bird with mud he took some mud formed a bird, when he breathed into it, became a live bird. So I think that he can give life. He give life to a mud, clay. And then Quran says that Jesus cured a man born blind and a man with leukoderma, leprosy, etc. Continuously Quran says that Jesus give life to dead people. Jesus went to heaven, he is still alive and he will come again. When I saw all these things in Quran, my thinking was what the Quran says about uh, Muhammad. You know, according to Quran, Prophet Muhammad is not the word of God, not the spirit of God, never spoke when he was two days old, never created any bird with mud, never cured any sick people, never raised any dead people. He himself died. And according to Islam, he is not alive and he will not come back. So there is a lot of difference between these two prophets. I, I, I don't call Jesus as God, you know. My idea was he's a prophet, but he's a prophet greater than Muhammad. So one day I went to my teacher, the one who taught me 10 years in Arabic college, and I asked him, teacher, how the God created the universe? Then he said, God created the universe through the word. Through the word. Then my question, word is creator or creation? Must clear it. My question, whether the word of God is creator or creation? Quran says Jesus is word of God. If my teacher said the word of God is creator, which means Jesus is creator, then the Muslims must become Christian. Suppose if he say the word is creation, he will be trapped. You know why? He said everything created through the word. Suppose if he say the word is creation, then how the God created the word? Wow. So he cannot say the word is creator, cannot say the word is creation. So he was quite angry. He pushed me out of his room and said, word is not the creator, not the creation. You get out from me, he said. If you see things so clearly, why don't all Muslims convert to Christianity? Why don't they accept this? They, they say the word is creation. They try to prove. They say the word is not the creator, not the creation, but uh, not God. Not God. Not the, not the creator, not the creation. So not God and not creation also. So they don't equal with God. That's all their problem. So then when he said that, I told my teacher, word is not the creator, not the creation. That is why Christian says word is son of God. Then he told me, if there is a son for God, I must show him the wife of God. Without wife, no chance for having a son. Then I showed a portion from the Quran. Quran says that God can see without eyes. God can talk without tongue. God can hear without ears. It's written in Quran. I said, if that is the case, he can have a child without a wife. So there we have a big argument and you know at the end what I did, I took my Quran, kept on my chest and I said, Allah, tell me what should I do? Because your Quran says Jesus is still alive, Muhammad is no more. You tell me whom should I accept? After my prayer, I opened Quran. I didn't ask anyone, I asked only to my Allah. When I opened Quran, I saw chapter 10 verse 94. You know what Quran says? فَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي شَكِّمْ مِمَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَأُونَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَقَدْ جَاءَكَ الْحَقِّ 
If you have any doubt in this Quran which I give to you, go and read the Bible or ask the people, those who read the Bible. The truth is already revealed in that. So if you ask me, who made me Christian? It's not any fathers, it's not any sisters, it's not any bishops, it's not any cardinal, it's not even Pope. But the Holy Quran converted me to Christianity. So after seeing this, I decided to study Bible and I went to a a retreat center called the Divine Retreat Center that's in India. Uh, we have a seven languages retreat. Lacks of people are coming there every week. You know, every week, Monday to Friday, residential retreat. And a lot of Hindus, Muslims, and Christians, and different denominations from all over the world, people come there. So I went there to do my Bible studies. That's how I had a relationship with Christianity or with Catholic Church. Okay, and that's when you decided to become Christian? And uh, immediately after coming, it was not. I attended a retreat first, and I was not very happy. I was uh, less than 19, not yet. I finished my studies and I was working in an uh, Arabic college, sorry, I was working in a masjid, so it was less than 19. And then while I was doing my Bible studies, there are a lot of points which touched me from Bible. The first day, uh, Father read John chapter 1 verse 1 onwards. In the beginning there was a word, the word was with God, the word was God, the word became flesh. So my Holy Quran says Jesus is the word of God. Now the Holy Bible also says Jesus is the word of God. So I found it both is very similar. And I was happy to know that I need Quran and I need Bible both. You know, I was in a mood like one day become Christian, one day Muslim, one day Christian, you know, I, I need both. While I was thinking like that, again one more word I heard, that was John chapter 1 verse 12. Such a lovely word for me because it's written in Bible, if anyone accept Jesus, Jesus will give them power to become children of God. In all the verses of the Quran, Allah calls the human beings slaves and Allah is master. Master cannot love the slave, slave cannot love the master. I don't like to be called by someone a slave. Quran says you are my slave. But when I heard John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, if you believe in Jesus, Jesus will give you power to become children of God. So immediately I said, I need Jesus because I want to be a child of God. There I began to call my God Daddy. Till then I never knew that I can call God Daddy. You know, Jesus taught the prayer in Aramaic language, Abun Doshmayo, our God who art in heaven, Abun he called. In Arabic language, Abun means our dad. You know, and if you ask me, I cannot express my joy whenever I call my dad, you know, whenever I call God dad. And whenever I think that the creator of the universe is my dad, I have a kind of joy which I cannot express. It's beyond my, you know, experience cannot explain. Only you can understand by experience. So I really love to call my God dad. There I decided to accept Jesus. So that's when you made the decision to become a Christian? Yes. And did you tell your family? No, no, no. That's where I stayed in Divine and uh, so many other points touched my life and I decided to become Christian. By the time um, I was missing in my home, so my parents thought I will be in my masjid and the masjid people thought I will be in my house. So when they both communicated, they understood I am not in masjid, not in home. So they searched for me everywhere. They give advertisement in newspaper and the television, etc. Finally, they found me in a Catholic retreat center. And one fine day, my dad came there. And it was very horrible because he beat me very badly. And there was bleeding from my nose and I was unconscious. And then he took me home. Uh, I don't know how he took me, but somehow he took me home because I was unconscious. Uh, when I came in conscious, I was in a small room without any cloth. I was completely naked and my hands and legs were chained very tight and I could not even speak because there was chili powder in my mouth, nose, eyes and you know, wherever the wound was there in my skin, they applied some chili there also for, for me to get burning and it, it, they did so much because it is written in Quran more than 18 places to fight with the non-believers and it is written in some places to kill the one who reject Islam. So my dad is obeying the law of Quran so he wants to do something 
and uh, within few days uh, they did not give me food or water and I, I was dried off and one day my lift broke and I was trying to lick little blood to wet my throat then my brother came and passed urine in my mouth you know they said that, that's punishment for you to believe in Christ and then uh, so after so many days like without food or water my stomach became wrong and my entire body became weak and I became like a bone like, finally I lost even my memory power I can't even think because no food no water so like a dead man and I don't know how many days more than 20 days it was there in the room and one day my dad came to room and he removed my chain and I was not aware and he chopped my throat very deep to know is there, is there life in my body so when he chopped very deep I couldn't breathe so when I opened my eye I could see a big knife in his hand so my dad said it's your last moment no hope he said if you need Allah I will allow you to leave if you need Jesus, I will kill you. I, I know that, you know, when I was in the womb itself, all said I will die. But they loved me so much and they, they prayed and they got the life. And now they want to kill me. So I don't know. And I, according to, I, I know my dad well, he will kill me. So when I know that it's my last moment of death, I, I, I thought, anyway, Jesus died, but he came back. If I believe in Jesus and I, I to make get my life, you know, a kind of a joy, you know, it is better to die in Jesus. When I decided, suddenly a light fell on my forehead, you know, a moonlight, something fell on my... And there was a kind of electric shock, something passed throughout my vein. And I was so energized, you know, from somewhere the energy flow into my body and I couldn't control myself. That much energy there was in my bone. I pulled my dad's hand down and I cried out, Jesus! When I cried out, my dad fell on the ground. When he fell with the knife which he was holding, there was a big bone for his chest. And there was bleeding and some kind of foe was coming from his mouth and he was screaming, you know. And all were shocked, my brothers and mom, my sisters, they, they don't know what's happening. So they thought my dad is already dead, so they took my dad and ran to hospital. When they were running to hospital, they forgot to lock my room from outside. And I was in an energy which I cannot tell you because I was only born. No food, so many days, more than 20 days, bony, but very energy. So I just came out and wore the dress of my dad, I ran to taxi stand, took a taxi, straight away went to Porta. On the way, the taxi man, he was a Christian, so he bought for me some kanji juice and everything. And he knows my struggle and he taught me to put down. And he contacts me even now. He's a very good friend of mine, the taxi driver. So I went, came to Porta again. That day, really I understood my Jesus is alive even now. When I call him for my need, he, he saved me. So which means he is present here, even when I am talking to you. So that, that is my life. Everywhere I know that he is present. Because now after my conversion 18 years, I never, I never thought that the Muslims will allow me to live 18 years. And I have even preached in Middle East, where the Arabs came, but nothing happened. So which means uh, my Jesus is alive and he is protecting me. Mario, Mario, is your life in danger? Are people still trying to kill you? Yes, even after, after this experience, so many times they tried to kill me. And at the end, my parents, you know, um, they did a mock uh, funeral ceremony. You know what it is? It's uh, like um, outcasting, keeping you out. You know what they did? They made my statue and buried in a grave. And they wrote my birth date and death date. They wrote the original birth date, but the death date, the day when I became Christian, when I took the baptism. So that is the death day for them and they buried. So in my hometown, I have my own grave, you know. One of my friend, uh, a Christian friend, when he passed that way, he took the photo of that grave and sent it to me. That's how I know that I have a grave. So thereafter, no contact with my, with my sisters, whom I love so much. And my mom, I really love her, but no hope. I can, I, humanly speaking, no hope. God can touch them within a moment. So I'm praying. And even if they did not accept Christianity, I, I'm always saying, Jesus, please take them to heaven. Where I am, I need them. So that's my prayer always. Yeah. And you're not afraid to die? 
Never, never. No, they said we are the fear of death is actually a foolishness. You know why? All those who are born should die one day. Hundred percent, all have to die. You have to die. All have to die. Whether you fear or you don't fear, you have to die. It's a fact. And I will say that is the only assurant thing which you will attain on earth. Now, when I am talking to you, I am not sure whether this will be broadcasted. Because anything can happen. I am not sure whether I will have tonight my dinner. I am not sure. I am not sure whether I will be back to India. I am not sure. I am not sure whether my children studies very well and get the certificate. I am not sure of anything, anything. The only thing which is surest to me on earth is that I will die. All other things are unsurest thing and you are trying. Something is happening, something not happening. But it is unsurest, it's not sure. The only thing which is surest on earth is death. So never fear death. You must be sure that it is going to come one day. Then what you can do is, you can think like this. If you believe in Muhammad and I, you know what will be your situation? Prophet Muhammad died, people buried, and afterwards we don't know where he went. If I believe in him and I, I don't know where I will go. Gautam Buddha, Mahavira, Guru Nanaka, Shirdi, Babi, Kali, Muruga, Baswana, Vamana, so many gods and goddesses in my country, in India. All have lived, created history, they died, people buried, and they were, we don't know where they went. So if I believe in all these gods and goddesses, I don't know what's my future. But Christ, who died, but he came back. So I have a hope, if I die in Christ, I can come back. So it is better, be sure of death, and that should be in Christ. Because Jesus very clearly said, I am going to my father's house. Romans, uh, sorry, John chapter 14 verse 3. I am going to my father's house. There are so many rooms. And I will arrange a room for you. Then I will come back to take you. So, you know, I am so happy to know that my Jesus is arranging big bungalow for me there. Big house. Once if he finished the work, he will come back to take me. I think it is a big bungalow because last 18 years, Muslims tried to kill me. They could not kill. Which means still the construction is going on. Once if it is ready, then he will come back to take me. Then only the Muslims can kill me. Till then nobody can. So I am not afraid of death, because that is a fact. Only thing I am thinking, after my death, what? To have eternal life, you need Jesus. And not only that, you need Catholic Church. I will specifically say that because uh, my faith is, every religion says the block between God and man is sin. And in Islam, for the sin, they are offering animal. For their sin, they are sacrificing animal. In Hinduism, next birth, next birth. But only in Christianity, Jesus himself took my sin and my punishment. And he removed this sin from me. And he made me pure. And he can surrender me to God. The Father saying that he is pure and I have purified. I have taken out all his transgression, his punishment and his sins. So now you can take him to heaven. So Jesus is my savior. He is a perfect man because I am man. My savior should be a man. And he is perfect to God because I need eternal life. Only God can give eternal life. Now it's very simple to tell you. The consequences of sin is death. The consequences of sin is death. So to remove the death, what you sh must should do? To remove the darkness, you must bring light. The same way, to remove the death, you must bring life. Whose life? In the Old Testament, they were giving the life of animal because they believed uh, life in blood and animal blood. And Muslims are doing even now. But to remove my death, I need eternal life. From where I can get eternal life? Only from God. And that is given by Jesus on the cross. So when I partake in his body and in his blood, I am partaking in his life. I am becoming part of his life. So then I, that's why Jesus calls me brother. And uh, we, Jesus and we both calls God daddy. You know, it's, uh, it's a union in God and we are, we are attaining eternal life. So to receive this, uh, always you must be a Catholic. Because Jesus clearly said, if you eat my body, if you drink my blood, you shall never die. Even if you die, I will raise you. So that's how I decided to become Christian, especially a Catholic. 
Okay, now, I have a question. Your life is in danger. You're here in Europe taking a huge risk by sharing your testimony with others. What do you think about the people here in Europe who are baptized but who don't practice their faith? What would you say to them? This. Uh, that's the reason there are two problems. One is that uh, we are very weak in educating our children in faith. We are very weak. And that weakness originated in us. We were speaking a lot of freedom for human beings. So when, the, when we give a lot of freedom which is not permitted by God, this has happened. For example, uh, the gay marriages or uh, fetus killing or uh, abortion, you know, or the alcohol or drugs. Everything is legalized in all the countries now, almost everywhere. So when it is legalized, nobody has the right to question anyone. Even the parents doesn't have the right to question the children. So this human freedom is the real problem to come out of faith. And the second thing, in this freedom, the parents are unable to tell children to go for catechism. But in Islam, since uh, it's a political religion, it's Islam, the beauty of Islam is Islam is a religion and it is a politics. So it's a political religion. So Islam tried to control the Islamic world with Sharia law. So it is forcibly asking the children to attend uh, the catechism. So from childhood onwards, they are training with real catechism. So they have a lot of fanatic faith. I say we, we must respect the human being, we must give full freedom for the human being. At the same time, from childhood, we must try to educate Catholicism to our children. If it can, then definitely the European world will change. You know, uh, two days before I was praying for Europe, after reaching here at midnight, I was praying and asked the Lord, what's a message to the Europe, especially to the Spain? And I received a message that was John chapter, sorry, the Revelation chapter 2 verses 2 to 4. God himself says, I know how hard work you did for me. God mm -hmm. says to Spain, Spain did a lot of hard work for the, Jesus, for the name of Jesus. And I know how much you suffered for me. A lot of suffering we have gone through for Jesus. And I, I know how you tolerate the uh, false prophets. Spain have fought with false prophets so many years and then God says, but now I have a complaint against you. You lost that first love. You lost that first love. Get back that love. So the entire Europe, God have to say, God is saying only one thing. Get the same love back. How your forefathers was here. Get back. And uh, we all will pray for that and we will work for that. That's all my ambition. That, that's the reason I am here. In uh, It's not I wish to come here, but God sent me to Europe. So there are so many prophets, those who are coming to Europe. And there are so many prophets in Europe, so many saints in Europe, which we are not aware. So all will be working and praying together. Definitely the changes will happen. It's a good thing you see it like that, huh? Can you tell us a little about what you do now, what type of apostolate you have, how you spend your time? Okay, uh, in the retreat center where I am staying, it's a Catholic retreat center. We have retreats in uh, uh, local language Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Kongani, Hindi, and English. So I have talks every day in all the languages. So every day I am occupied, which means Monday to Friday, every day I am occupied uh, with uh, sharing the word of God and my witness to the thousands of people. Apart from that, when God sent me to other countries or other parts of India, I move around. So this is my present life, so serving for the Lord. In the beginning, you mentioned, you mentioned something about Our Lady. How was your relationship with her since you became Christian? How do you how do you relate with her? What do you think about the image of Our Lady? Do you see her as your mother, perhaps? With Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. That's a nice question. You see, when I was very small, one day my, for my toes there was an infection, and my mama took me to a hospital, and the name of the hospital was Fatima Hospital, and Fatima is the name of Prophet Muhammad's daughter. But there was a lot of Catholic sisters and fathers. So I asked my mama, 
Mama, it's a name. Fatima is our name, no? Why this Christian keeps the name? Then my mother explained me about Fatima, uh, you know, the Spain, Portugal, Fatima, how the Mother Mary appeared and all. And then she explained me about Mother Mary. So from childhood onwards, I heard about Mother Mary and there was a liking for, you know, a love for me uh, towards Mother Mary. And then later on, when I read the Quran, I understood what all my mama taught me is true. And later on, when I came to Catholic Church, then again, my faith became more deeper. And since I love Mother Mary, you know, when at the time of my baptism, uh, my spiritual father asked me what name you prefer. So my name was Suleiman ibn Ahmad in Islam. So all the fathers said, you keep Solomon. Solomon is Suleiman. I said, no, I love Mother Mary so much, so I need Mother Mary's name. And then they said, it's a lady's name, you are men. I said, we will find out some name. Then one of the priests who was from Italy, he said, Mario. So that's how I got the name Mario, Italian name, because I love Mother Mary. And then second name they asked what I said, if Mary is there, then let it be Joseph. So Mario Joseph. So, you know, I love and I always ask the intercession of Mother Mary and I know that she is protecting me wherever I am. When I go to Muslim world and when I am traveling, I know that she is protecting me so much. As our, uh, John Paul II said, you know, uh, Mother Mary protects her children so much. So it's my experience. Okay, Mario Joseph, just to wrap things up, what would you like to say to the people who are watching this show? What would you say to them? Same thing, well, same thing I'm saying while I was praying for the Spanish people, I got a message from Bible that is from uh, Revelation chapter 2, verses 2, 3, 4. So come back to the same love which you have earlier towards the church, towards the cross, towards the heaven. So we must come back to the same position. That's all I will say.